Hello everyone, this video is about user interface design and some of the key principles that should drive your decisions when you are designing a user interface for your system. The learning objectives for this video are as follows. After watching the video, students should be able to explain the concept of usability with regard to the user interface and describe several fundamental user interface design principles. Let's start with some key definitions. The user interface is the portion of the system that directly interacts with users. Basically, it's what you're going to see on the screen in front of you. The navigation mechanism provides the way for users to tell the system what to do. The input mechanism defines the way the system captures information. And the output mechanism defines the way the system provides information to users or other systems. These are the three main components of the user interface. A graphical user interface is a user interface that utilizes colors and graphics, as opposed to text only like you see here in the picture in the old DOS system. We don't see many of these systems anymore. Nowadays, almost every single system has a graphical user interface. The key concept that should drive the design of the user interface is usability. What makes a system usable? Well, that means that the system is easy to use and easy to learn. Why should we focus on usability as the key concept instead of another concept such as efficiency or speed? While tasks are completed more efficiently and with more accuracy when your system is usable, mistakes with the system are reduced, the user satisfaction with the new system is increased, and adoption of the system is more likely. Even if you have a great database on the back end and your system is programmed very well, if the user interface is not usable or compatible with the user who is sitting down to use the system, then they are going to push back and they will not want to use the system at all. While usability is our key overarching goal for the user interface, there are six more specific principles for user interface design that help us to reach a usable interface. Layout, content awareness, aesthetics, usage level, consistency, and minimizing user effort. We will go through each of these six in more detail on the following slides and I'll provide several examples for each. The first principle is layout. We want to make sure that the user interface is laid out in a way that makes the system easy to use. Most screens are often divided into three parts, the navigation area at the top, a status area at the bottom, and everything else in the middle is a work area. For example, you can see here in PowerPoint that at the top we have some navigation, we have different menus and uh, ribbon tabs that we can navigate through different functions of the system. At the bottom we have a status bar to see what slide we're on our zoom level and some different options. And then in the middle is our work area. In some systems, the work area might be divided up and having information be presented in multiple areas. In this case, areas should remain consistent in size, shape, and placement in order not to confuse the user. And you should minimize user movement from one area to another. Let's take a look at some examples. On the top, I've got a couple of links to university websites, and at the bottom, I've got a link to Wikipedia. Let's weigh the pros and the cons of the layout of each of these. Let's start with this uat.edu website. How does the layout of this website look to you? Well, we can see, first of all, it's hard to navigate around things when they're moving around all the time. They do have a navigation area up at the top, but they also seem to have some navigation down at the bottom, which seems redundant and a little confusing. What else do you like or dislike about the layout of this website? Message the class in one of this week's forums to let us know. How about Fullerton's website? Is the layout of this website set up well? Again, the layout looks fairly clean. There's some navigation at the top, but there's also navigation on the side and more navigation down at the bottom. I'm not a fan of a lot of university websites just because of the layout aspect where they seem to have links and navigation all over the place and it's hard to find things from one standard starting place. How about Wikipedia? What do you think, good or bad? I think Wikipedia in general has a very nice layout because all of their links and navigation are over on the left and the links to edit the articles are up at the top and then everything else is in the work area. It's pretty simple and straightforward as far as layout is concerned. What do you like or dislike about the layout of any of these or any other system that you've seen? Here are some layout tips for touchscreen design. We know that a lot of systems are moving toward being compatible with mobile devices. First, place content at the top and navigation controls at the bottom so fingers don't obscure the content area when people are using their phone or tablet. 
Next, place labels on top of navigation controls rather than to the left, as with traditional desktop interfaces. Third, size objects correctly for fat fingers and include adequate spacing between objects. Remember that you have a limited amount of space on mobile devices. And consider the needs of left-handed and right-handed users. Let's take a look at some examples to illustrate these points. Here are two mobile systems. Which one do you think is better than the other as far as layout is concerned? The one on the left seems to have navigation on the bottom as well as on the top, so your hand could get in the way when you're using the top navigation. In addition, the layout of the labels for the different components make the screen seem really crowded, having things over on the left instead of on top. This example over on the right looks very nice and clean. The navigation is on the bottom. All of the different areas are consistent in color and shape. What do you think? What's good and bad about either of these? Let us know in the forums. The second key concept is content awareness. This means being very informative and almost obvious about what content is on the screen that you're looking at. All interfaces should have titles, and menus should show where you are and where you came from to get there. It should be clear what information is within each area. Fields and field labels should be selected carefully. Sometimes it's useful for dates and version numbers to be included. The overall idea is that we want the users to easily be able to understand what information it is that they're looking at on the screen. Let's take a look at some more examples. Here I have two more examples. One is a website and one is a desktop system, which is PowerPoint. Let's start with PowerPoint. What's good and bad about content awareness for PowerPoint? I think PowerPoint does fairly well at content awareness. Anytime you put your mouse over any option, there's some hover text that tells you what that option does. Everything is organized cleanly into menus, and everything has a title. How about this website, Critical Path Project? How does this system do with content awareness? Personally, I think it's pretty bad. If you just open up this website, you have no idea what the website is about. What is Critical Path? What are all these pictures of these people all about? What do these labels mean? What are mines and tags? You don't know where you are or where you can go in this system. What do you think about the content awareness of this website? If you disagree, leave some comments in the forum. All right, so first was layout, second was content awareness. The third principle of interface design is aesthetics. A system doesn't have to be elaborately beautiful, but it should be functional and inviting to use. Avoid squeezing in too much information, particularly for novice users. Design your text carefully. Think about the font that you're using and the size of that font. Avoid using all capital letters. Use colors and patterns thoughtfully and carefully. For example, you can use colors to separate or categorize items. And for touch screens, use bright colors and backgrounds to help reduce glare and hide fingerprints. Let's take a look at more examples. Here are two mobile apps. How are the aesthetics of these mobile apps? The one on the left is pretty bad. You can barely even read the text on the screen. The one on the right is better because it's simpler. I also like the color better in the one on the right because it's used thoughtfully. Different colors represent different categories. Any other thoughts about the aesthetics of these mobile apps? When thinking about aesthetics, think about Google.com. Just keep it simple. The fourth principle for user interface design is usage level. Some people will be frequent heavy users of the system. These users desire ease of use, make things quick and easy to complete. Include ways to perform tasks directly, such as using shortcut keys. If there is a system that people are using every day or multiple times a day, you don't want them to have to take a lot of extra steps or click through a lot of different screens to be able to get to do common tasks. On the other hand, other people may use the system infrequently. For these users, the main goal is ease of learning quick and easy ways of figuring out what to do. Instead of focusing on efficiency of tasks, focus on efficiency of learning. Include careful menu designs, tooltips, and extensive help systems. In mobile devices, use standardized gesture interactions to enhance the user's ease of learning and ease of use. For example, the pinch for zooming in and zooming out. Here are two more examples to think about the usage level principle. On the top is a corporate system for downloading logs. On the bottom is a screenshot from Microsoft Word. Think about each of these separately. Don't compare them directly. For the one on the top, do you think it's good for new or unexperienced users to figure out how to use the system? 
I would say no, there are not a lot of directions and it seems to be a little confusing because you can start from a date or end at a time. It's not really clear to the user what is going on, how you got here and where you can go next. Microsoft Word does a little bit better. Again, the Office Suite, when you put your mouse over an option, gives you some help text. There's always a lot of help available in Microsoft Word. How about for experienced users? The system on the top might be okay for people who use the system every day and already know how it works. It looks like there's few clicks to get around, so things are very efficient. Thanks to Karen from our online section this semester for providing the example here on the top. It is a pretty bad example of user interface design. Besides being unintuitive, it has formatting issues. For example, MM you would think would be 09 for month, and the radio buttons are so close to the date and time options as to make everything confusing. The fifth principle is consistency. You should make sure that elements are the same throughout the application, and enable users to predict what will happen. This reduces the learning curve, and you should consider elements both within an application and across applications. For example, the Microsoft Suite uses a similar layout for Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft PowerPoint to make it easier for users to switch across these applications. Consistency applies to many different levels, navigation controls, terminology, and report and form design. Let's again take a look at some examples. If these buttons in the upper right corner were all from the same site, this would be a terrible example of consistency. All of the buttons have different sizes, shapes, colors, and fonts. This could get very confusing to new users or even experienced users. How about my website? Let's critique it. At first, it seems like a lot of the pages have very consistent colors and fonts and layouts. So I've done pretty good so far, at least on my research and teaching pages. However, when you get to some of the other tabs, things start looking a little bit different and confusing. So I can see I've got a little bit of work to do on the consistency of my website. The last of the six principles is minimizing effort. If users have to take a lot of extra steps to get something done, they will not be happy. One standard to take note of is the three clicks rule. Generally speaking, users should be able to go from the start or main menu of a system to the information or action they want to in no more than three mouse clicks or three keystrokes. Another tip to keep in mind for minimizing effort, especially on mobile devices, is that touchscreens are ideal for information display, but not data entry. So when possible, provide selection tools instead of requiring typing, especially if people are going to be using mobile devices. We'll talk more about that in another video. The example I've chosen to demonstrate minimizing effort is the Fullerton class catalog. Do you think it's good or bad, and why? Try searching for a class in CSUF's class catalog starting from your portal. How many clicks does it take to get there? How much effort does it take? If I start from my portal and click on Titan Online, it seems like this is an extra step and an extra click. Then I have to go to my faculty or student center go over to search. I've already clicked four or five times. So this could get really tedious if this is something I want to do on a regular basis. Here's one more example. Whoa! What is going on here? What is wrong with this site? Think about it in terms of the six key principles of design. Not only is it pretty ugly, it has some other pretty bad issues when you consider layout, consistency, and all of the six user interface principles. Share what you think is wrong with this website in each of these categories on the forum this week. And if you want to see this website designed in a better way, there's a link in the upper right corner. What other examples have you experienced are good of good or bad user interface design? Think about it and share it with the class on the forums this week.